Bruce. It's Uncle Larry with another bench video. Um, here's another guitar that just came in recently. It's a 1960 Les Paul Jr. Uh, very lightweight with a beautiful, vibrant cherry finish. And um, it's got, even though it's a 60, it has a very 59 feeling neck. Um, beautiful little guitar. Um, I know you guys are probably thinking, gee, Larry, you sure buy a lot of guitars, but you got to remember, I also sell a lot of guitars, friends. I don't keep stuff very long, so that's like a scratch or maybe a crack or something. This is, this is a little wonky here, but man, this guitar is beautiful. Um, only has one problem and there it is. So I'm going to string her up with some tens. It had nines on it or something, and I couldn't tell what it was. So I'm going to put some tens on it, have a chat with you guys, and see how it does with the old MCB bridge. All right. Hello, friends. It's just old Uncle Larry coming at you on a beautiful spring day in Nashville, Tennessee. Cheers, friends. Um about to put some strings on this old uh, 60 Junior. Um, interestingly enough, I've done this mod about a dozen times on old 50s Les Pauls. This is the first time a stud finder wouldn't fit on the original studs. So I had to change them. And uh, I got, luckily I had some other studs laying around. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's the eve of 100,000 subscribers, people. Can you believe it? Our silly little channel that started out as a joke is up to 100,000. We're less than 100 people away from uh, getting to the 100K mark. I wonder if my life is going to be radically different after that. You think it will? You think, like, when I go to Publix, they're going to notice me? Because they sure don't now. I gotta tell you about a, a totally fucked up thing that happened to me. Just a total dumbass Uncle Larry move. Probably the dumbest thing I've done in a long time. But I don't mind sharing with you guys because we're all friends here. Um, so two nights ago, my dear boy Marshall, he's obsessed with Weezer now. He loves Weezer. And uh, so uh, he said, Dad, Weezer's coming to town. They're playing at Brewstone. We gotta go get tickets. We gotta, we gotta get online and get tickets. So I said, all right, let me look. So I get on this thing called Event Ticket Center, right? And the shows aren't till September. So there's a whole list of tours, cities that they're doing, you know, um, on this tour. Tickets are expensive. They're like over 200 bucks a piece. So I'm looking and I see the Nashville Bridgestone one. And, uh, and then right above it, it like they're, they're very close together. And it says, it says shop tickets, you know. So I click on the box, it says shop tickets. And I pick out two beautiful seats, lower level 114. That real nice seats, you know. They were like 200 and some bucks a piece. To, with total cost, it was like almost 600 bucks, right? So um, I'm, I, I go to hit pay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I go to hit pay. And uh, right as I'm about to check out, hit the final pay, I noticed that I bought tickets for the wrong city. I, I, I checked the box above the one I was supposed to be looking at. So now I've got two tickets for Greenville, South Carolina, which is five hours away from me, and I'm not driving that far. See Weezer, no offense to anybody. Um, so I was like, oh shit. I, you know, I, I immediately called uh, the company, the ticket company, and I get on the phone with this guy, and he's like, uh, let me see, uh, let me see, I go, can you just switch the tickets to a different city, please? I made a mistake on the purchase, and the guy goes, let me look. So he comes off the phone for a minute, and he comes back, and he says, there's nothing I can do. All sales final. And I was like, are you serious, man? I, the concert's like, you know, months away. And he's like, there's nothing I can do. So now I'm stuck with two tickets for Greenville, South Carolina. If anybody out there wants to go see Weezer, 
September 18th. Nice seats. Hit up, hit me up, and uh, I'll make you a killer deal on those tickets. Okay. Oh man, Marshall was like, the, he was like, I'm so sorry, Dad. You're a good dad. He was trying to console me. I was pissed. I felt like I just burned 600 bucks with a match. Uh, I don't mind spending money, but I hate wasting it. You know what I mean? Oh, man, just for something stupid like that. You know, and now I still got to go buy tickets for Nashville. So anyway, if anybody out there knows the guys in Weezer, just tell them that story. And tell them that if they ever need any help from me, I'd be glad to repay the favor. Um, so, uh, what else? Uh... I was just driving around all day getting a bunch of errands done in my old Monte Carlo. It was beautiful weather. I went and saw my great tax lady. I've had the same tax lady for 30 years. She's amazing. I think her IQ must be like 160. Kathy Worthen. W-E-R-T-H-A-N. You guys need a good tax lady in Nashville. God, she's amazing. You got to have a good doctor, mechanic, AC guy, and tax person. When you're a grown up, I have a great AC guy too. If you guys anybody, anybody needs him, and a good home repair guy, all that stuff, and the best mechanic in the world. So if anybody uh, needs any of that stuff, just ask Uncle Larry. I've been around a long time. This guitar, man, funny. You know, I, I don't even notice these normally. These guitars are so common. You know, 58, 59, 60, double cut Cherry Juniors. There's millions of them around. I see them in music stores all the time. I don't even really look at them. But for some reason, this one really caught my attention. Something about the way that cherry just looks like it's got a light bulb inside of it. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It glows. And the guy said in the ad, it's got a big 59 neck and it's real lightweight. And I was like, all right, you got me. You got me, pal. So I bought it from some guy on Reverb and he had beautiful pictures. And uh, there you have it. So let's see if it's any good. It seems like it's got potential. Um, I don't even have a single cut or a single pickup junior at the moment. But I am pretty thick on P90 guitars. But, you know, what's wrong with that, right? I've been pretty busy lately with sessions, too. Um, Thanks for all the kind words about the Gwen Stefani video. She's such a cool person, man. God. She's just aces. It's really cool to hang out with her for a while and play some music. What a singer, too. I mean, one take singer, you know what I mean? She can sing anything. Um, that was a fun, fun project. I can't wait to hear the record when it's done. All right, friends, I'm gonna I'm gonna string this up, do a little tweaking. I'll report back in a minute. Okay. Okay, friends. There you go. I had to, um, for some reason, this is like a transitional guitar. This one's different than anyone I've ever worked on. I had to uh, drive this Allen screw in much further than I usually do to get this guitar in tune. But boy, is it in tune. It sounds amazing. What the hell? A Les Paul Jr. and that that in tune. Can you believe that? This thing's amazing. This bridge really works, friends. I know I keep harping on it. I'm just trying to tell you. You gotta get one of these on your guitar. See, I've had a lot of questions about I know what what years the old you know there's the stud finder and the savvy and i know what year the, they work on the old guitar but I, i've had a lot of questions about do they work on new guitars so stick around and i asked nick druschel the guy who helped design this at glazer instruments um to explain what new guitars these work on so um that's going to be tacked on the end of this video and hope you enjoyed all right peace out hello homeschoolers it's uh Uncle Larry at his favorite repair shop here, Glazer Instruments, with schoolers. dear Nick Druschel, who has saved my ass a million times. <laughs> um, Nick, I have, there's a question that only you can answer, okay? We've got the two 
MCB. I call it MCB. You know, it's sort of a short. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> We've got the, the Savvy and the Stud Finder. Everyone, so I, I think I've made it very clear to people what old guitars that these work on. Yes. But what I don't know, and I've had a million questions about this, is what new guitars that they work on. So this, these are both Savvies. Yes. Okay, and this is not, these are not Stud Finders. Okay, I can see So that. on the 60s style... I made this one with the intonation line a little, you can see it's a little bit farther back than this okay. one. So there's two types of savvies. Yes. How, this, how would you know that when you went to buy them? How would you know which one to ask for? If you put, to order a regular savvy okay. and you tell us what year it is, okay. if it's a newer one, okay. we'll send one of these with the intonation line more forward, more centered on the post. Okay. Where Either one probably would work. Yes. Probably, yeah. Okay. More than likely. This one would just be sitting a little bit more forward. Okay. Because Gibson put them all over the place. I gotcha. And so we have we have plenty of people that send in pictures and okay. ask us, what does this need? And if I just see a picture of it, I can tell you immediately. Right. So if they email the customer service, I can, okay. I'll look at it and I'll know immediately. So if anybody out there has questions about what newer guitars these will work on, just email you or email uh, or Email call. the, I think it's Howdy at MCB. Okay. Customers whatever's on the site whatever's uh, on the what, music yeah. city bridge website okay so um like let's just say it's a um, i hear that people ask me this all the time say it's a 2009 les paul jr right and you gotta ask is that a custom shop yeah or okay. is it a, all right or is it a it, factory because they would they put them in two different spots okay so, so the custom shop they tried to make them more offset i see and then on the factory ones they just put them more straight across like they did on I just see. a regular standard reissue okay. so you can just eyeball a guitar yeah. and tell you what what okay so i'll i'll find that link uh for the customer service yeah. i'll put it in there so if anybody out there wants to buy a stud finder or a savvy which you should do we'll figure out what you know works on newer guitars because yeah the one thing that I've tried to make clear, and I think all you homeschoolers know, is that the Savvy, you know, uh, which you can get in aged or new, was was for anything post-60, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the original Stud Finder with all the extra metal was for juniors and specials between 54 that and 60. big offset. With right. the big offset. And then they changed the offset, 61, mm -hmm. and that's, when, that's why we came up with the Savvy. So if it's a 54 to 60 special or junior, you get the Stud Finder, 61 onward you get the savvy right and then most new guitars will use the savvy yes uh is there any anything else that like things to look out for like any new guitars that this won't work on um i think if you look at the tailpiece that's currently on there if yes. it's intonating right in the center of your posts okay then it'd be this style i see Okay. You know, if it's intonate, if you're having to push the screws in quite a ways okay. and your tailpiece is sitting way back on the post, I got you. Then it'd be more like because then this will seat into the post better. Okay. Does that make sense? Is it okay if I give these people your home phone number? <laughs> <and some laughs> Absolutely. Just text me anytime. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Great. I don't get enough every day. Exactly. <laughs> Nick, thank you for explaining <laughs> this. I had no idea how to explain this. I had this question a million times. Yeah. So, so thanks. Absolutely. Right. See thanks. you, buddy.